Good morning. In 1981, when we were just youngins, that's my classmate, Father Greg. I'm kind of thrilled to bits. Aren't we the handsomest class you've ever seen? In 1981, there was a book that came out called Getting to Yes. Um, it's become a very famous book in the business world. It's about negotiating so that you get what you want and the person or group you're negotiating with doesn't feel like they've lost anything. It's a strategy. Yeah. Fortunately, it's not God's strategy. <laughs> God was looking for a yes from Mary and was able to allow her heart to open in a very special way. I mean, if, if we took the ways of the world, we would say the angel Gabriel wasn't a good counselor, you know, because he said to her, don't be afraid. And if you know anything about that, a counselor's not supposed to deny anyone's feelings, you know. But no. God, in the presence of the angel Gabriel, sees more deeply. The angel Gabriel sees what God has planted in her, in her immaculate conception, and speaks to that level of her reality, and says, don't be afraid. And because that word touches the grace within her, she's able to get to yes like that. That's what happens when the Word of God touches the graced nature of a human being. And it's not just for Mary, because you and I, by reason of our baptism, have that same place within us. And God is speaking to that place, waiting for our yes on whatever level that is. That's what it means fundamentally to be a disciple. To listen for the word of God that speaks to the place where the spirit of God lives within us and helps us to get to yes, helps us to get to the place where we can say, let it be done to me according to your word. Pope Benedict, in the document concluding the continental meeting of the bishops in Latin America, said, because of this, we can say that Mary is the perfect disciple and the first disciple. The woman who lives in the word of God and listens to the word of God and lets that word touch her and draw from her a response that's absolutely necessary for the world. And each of us has something within us that's absolutely necessary for the world. It might be just within our family, it might be in our workplace, it might be in our local community, but there's something in each one of us that God wants for the world. God calls each of the baptized to be a disciple. But she doesn't just revel in that or sit with that. The scriptures tell us in Luke's gospel, she goes out. She moves out of her own life and her own mystery and goes to visit dear cousin Elizabeth. Goes to visit her with only one thing in mind, I think, to help, to accompany, to be present with her in her mystery of her late in life pregnancy. But because she cooperates with this spirit of service, this spirit of generosity, this spirit of love, God opens something else up. Elizabeth finds the presence of, presence of God deep within her world. Her child, John, recognizes the presence of the Savior 
and the Spirit of God spurs Elizabeth to prophecy in the presence of Mary. So Mary's cooperation with God bursts from her own experience and becomes the experience of her local community, of her family. She becomes a missionary to her cousin Elizabeth, bringing the, the living word of God with her into Elizabeth's presence and evoking a response of proclamation from her. That's why the bishops looked at Mary in this aspect of her life and said, yes, she is also the teacher of evangelization, the one who demonstrates to us what it looks like to be fundamentally a missionary, someone who bears the word of God to others. And because they do that with attention, in service, and with commitment and selfless generosity aimed at another, the word of God becomes active and alive in that moment and evokes faith from others. That was the title that they afforded her in that document, Mary, disciple and missionary, and pedagogue, teacher of evangelization. Pope Benedict, in his concluding address, spoke to the folks and quoted his own talk on the Feast of the Holy Rosary to the bishops there, saying that we should he said to them, teach your people to live in the school of Mary so that they too can become disciples and missionaries, the vocation of every baptized Christian. Teach them to be at home with the word of God, to live with the word of God daily in their lives as Mary did so that they will know what is the will of the God who made them and calls them in this day. Those same words, I think, are tremendously applicable to you and to me, and especially because we are people with great devotion to Our Lady. That we look to Jesus as the goal of our life, and we look to Mary as the model of how to find our way to that goal. To be at the service of the word of God. First, to be discipled, to be taught, to have that word enter deeply into our lives and to evoke from us the response of faith, which is the yes that Mary gave. And then from that moment forward, to become missionaries, to become people who take that word with us wherever we go and allow that word to evoke the response of faith in others. We want to get to yes. And the way to do that is to model our lives after her live deeply in the Word of God and listen attentively to when it speaks to us and it will touch that same graced place that lives within each of us, revealing to us what it is that God wants us to do and giving us the strength to go out from where we are, missionaries of the Word of God. For we, like Mary, our disciples and missionaries.